renewable energy is going to be a critical component um, in the transition or in um, the fight against climate change? I would definitely say yes that it did. Uh, the stage at which Africa is, every conversation helps. So was it positive for Africa? I think Yes, in the sense that we have um, a, a, almost a shift in the narrative because Africans are now beginning to stand up and, and look at ourselves as the answer, the solution. The biggest thing that young people can do right now is to hold governments accountable, to hold institutions accountable. There are several reasons why, as Africa, we need to make an energy transition. One, just because it's good for the environment. Of course, one could make the argument that we didn't contribute to the problem, why are we cut, you know, why are we transitioning? But at the same time, we, could, we also look at it and say we are bearing the biggest brand. So we have to come together right now and fix the problem. Secondly, investments are going to start flowing towards renewable energy resources. Um, you're going to see less and less investments going into fossil fuels. And so if, I was, you know, if I'm an African country and I'm thinking about where are investments going, who will be funding energy in the future, the smart move is to move towards uh, where the funding would be going into. And thirdly, related to that, countries or the world is, starting, is going to start looking for renewable energy for its industry and other resources. And so again, positioning ourselves as a continent that will provide the energy resources that are needed um, for a just transition is, is a smart thing to do. And so... And lastly, we have we are sitting on more than forty percent of the world's energy, you know, of the world's renewable energy resources. Um, I think it's only you know fair and also smart for us as Africans to utilize the one thing that the world is looking for right now, which is renewable energy. So it's almost thinking about it as the new gold, as it were, of our day. Renewable energy is going to be a critical component um, in the transition or in um, the fight against climate change. We have it. Let's, let's find a way to utilize it, both for ourselves um, as a people, but also to help the world decarbonize. I would definitely say yes that it did. Uh, the stage at which Africa is, every conversation helps. Uh, we need to speak more about this. We need to create awareness uh, about the issues um, that we are facing. Uh, but I'd also add that the gains and the traction from, from these uh, gatherings can be better consolidated if the commitments that were made are met. If the financial uh, commitments are met and if the commitments of member nations uh, to pay more attention to climate related issues, if those commitments are also met, then uh, it will be, be more worth it than just talking about it. To leave it African, but that's a really difficult question for me to answer in specific because you know some of the conversations that you're having when you're, I, I think since the 70s again it has been very clear that Africa is not a contributor. We are not the cause of the problem that we that we are experiencing today. Less than four percent of emissions is Africa's responsibility, and we heard this phrase over and over again. We've heard it over and over again, um, and and so you know when you're in a point where we're just sort of reiterating the same things over and over again, the same realizations that we're not the problem, the same realizations that we have to transition, the same realizations that we have an opportunity because of all of the different things that Africa presents, the same realizations realizations that we need to adapt. We're just sort of reiterating the same things over and over again. So in that sense, for me, I, when I look at you know, the, the past COP, when I look at the Africa Climate Summit, um, I, 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 I am sort of burdened by that, that we're still sort of going over and over the same things. Um, I think the reality is that we, we, are, we are saying things in terms of where we stand, but action from the global community is not translating towards addressing those problems and those issues that we're identifying as facts. And, and I think that is really the, the biggest outcome for me when I think about it, is just how, how do we move beyond these realizations that we've been having for years on years to actually saying, okay, we acknowledge, we see, this is the money that we're going to put on the table to transform us from point X to point you know, Z. We're, we're still sort of just going around and around in circles. So was it positive for Africa? I think I, yes, in the sense that we have um, a, a, almost a shift in the narrative because Africans are now beginning to stand up and, and look at ourselves as the answer, the solution, the center of sort of transforming um, all of the challenges that we're experiencing right now, in, especially in reference to the climate crisis. But at the same time, it's, we, 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 we've identified the gaps, there's knowledge around this, 
it is it needs to translate now beyond these realizations and conversations to actual money on the table first of all is to get their voices heard the Gen Z's particularly have proven to be so powerful in terms of the use of social media and the biggest thing that young people can do right now is to hold governments accountable to hold institutions accountable if this government said they're going to do x y z they're going to reduce the emissions they're going to they pledged to give this amount of money then young people can use their power and their voice to ask for accountability from these institutions from these governments they can even go to the extent that they themselves can be the ones who are sitting on the negotiation table and um they have to ask the tough questions because we are letting governments do it for us and so far they're not being done as well as we expect as young people so in addition to making the policies then we can also tap into what is as a result of this climate negotiation so as i mentioned if it's agriculture how can young people be more engaged in that and so on